the week, and guys, it was on Friday actually, but Albert Breer, who's plugged in with Cleveland, he also works in Boston, had some interesting comments on what we've talked about for the last 20 minutes. So I want to just play these comments for you guys, and we can react quickly because we kind of already touched on it a little bit. But this is from Albert Breer's mouth to the national media audience on 98.5 in Boston. One key here that people will miss if they don't know it, right? So in Cleveland, the reason he was let go in Cleveland was because ownership and Paul D. Podesta, not Kevin Stefanski, ownership and Paul D. Podesta were frustrated with the progress Deshaun Watson had made. I, I don't think that they really, truly, the people who made that decision really, truly knew his value to that staff. And the people, other people on that staff, not so much Kevin, but people below him were floored when they fired him for two reasons. Number one, how do you fire the offensive coordinator after you just won 11 games <laughs> with four different quarterbacks, with your fourth <laughs> and fifth tackles, without Nick Chubb? Including at least two or three of those guys that nobody's ever heard of, right? right? I mean, you're talking so, about Jeff Driscoll, P.J. Walker, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Like, those are some of the guys he was working with. So today. you just went through that, right? He was able to help build an offense that was able to sustain with Joe Flacco coming off the couch, with their fourth and fifth tackles, without Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt coming back in. So there's that, like that I think is one reason why people there were floored that he got fired. The other one I think is, a, is the real key, though. He was the glue of that staff. Kevin, if you know him, he's a great guy. He's not the most outgoing guy, you know? He's just sort of like, like his personality is very dry. He's got a good sense of humor, but he's not like this outwardly gregarious guy. Alex was the one that held that staff together. When guys were coming out, when guys were going in, he is a guy who was a unifying force in that building. And after the year the Patriots just came off of, I think at one point the idea was somebody like Van Pelt as a senior offensive assistant and then a younger play caller underneath him. Um, not underneath him, but like the younger play caller with the senior offensive assistant backstopping him. Um, I, I think I might feel slightly better about it if that was the way it was, but I think it, I, AVP is way more qualified than a lot of the other guys they 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 interviewed just because he doesn't maybe have the look or he isn't the age that of a lot of the guys that have succeeded in that. Yeah, role. he doesn't have the tight pants and the coiffed hair. Right. Like <laughs> so that, that that ends up wrapping up talk Patriots for a little bit. But guys, your reaction to Albert Breer saying what he said on a Boston radio station on Friday. For, uh, diehard fans will know Albert Breer. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Albert's reputation is as good as they come. He is knowledgeable. He is plugged in. He works extremely hard. He's got a lot of contacts in and out of locker rooms, uh, hierarchy with general managers and front offices. He's, he is a pro's pro at this stuff. Therefore, I felt not vindicated. I just felt even stronger in my what I thought was going on because he confirmed every one of my notions, every one of them, that this was Paul and Jimmy. Kevin didn't want to do it, and that AVP was silently much more valuable to this machine than anyone on the outside knew. And so that scares me even more because, again, he was well-liked. We talked about you can't bring Joe Flacco back because if you do and Deshaun struggles, everybody's going to look at, at Joe as like when we put Joe in the game. Well, the problem that what, with what they've created is if it doesn't work, you said last year you all got six games Yep. Six game, go prove it. If it doesn't work early and things go sideways, you lose the locker room. That ratchets it up. I wouldn't say six; they got four. It might be four. And, and I'm and 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 in those games, see, I don't have a, the reason I don't have a problem with it is I guess how I feel. Much is given, much is required. Hey, listen, if you wanna, if you want your name on the show, right? When the ratings is good and your name is on the show, you win it. You own it. You own it. But when when the ratings go down, you can't be turned around and say, I don't got good producers and support staff. At the end of the day, you can't do that. So Deshaun, listen, he he's he has the juice. And we're not used to having franchise level big name quarterbacks. We don't have that here and we have not had it in Cleveland. So we don't understand that it looks like this a lot of the ways in other places with big name quarterbacks. Now here's the problem. You got to pick your, your guy? That's great. You picked him. 
Now you got to protect your guy. And how do you protect the people that you put in place, Deshaun? Come in and throw for 330. Come in and throw for 315 and three touchdowns. Come in and throw for 295 and 66 on the ground and two more touchdowns. And then guess what? Now everybody's like, oh, well, you, brilliant move. But if you come out and struggle, and I like pressure. I don't, people say, don't put the pressure on the court. I love pressure because it's going to tell me what you're all about. I'm not going to get to know about you when everything is, is fine and dandy and it's 72 degrees and you got your, your boat shoes on and everything's cool. I need to know what you talk about with that pressure on. That pressure is coming. I just want to see if you live up to it. Man, I, I think that uh, often a lot of people feel like we overblow and overhype the dismissal or firing of a position coach or an assistant coach and fans will write it off to well this is the off season and you all don't have anything to, to talk about other people might feel like it's just a position coach is no big deal but go to buffalo ask sean mcdermott you know how he feels not having uh brian dable not having leslie frazier on that coaching staff and tell me if it made a difference in how he goes about his business on a day-to-day avp was very well respected very well liked and I pray that this situation with Ken Dorsey work out because if not, then it's going to look like the Browns made a big mistake. People forget the year that Baker Mayfield was drafted, that final preseason game against the Detroit Lions, Baker got the start. You know who was the play caller? AVP. AVP. And when AVP got the opportunity that. to call plays in the playoff game that the Cleveland Browns beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in, when uh, Mike Prefer was the interim head coach while Kevin Stefanski had How'd they COVID, do in that playoff game? they looked damn well, yeah, right? They, they, hit the, they hit the ground cool. running. They looked fluid the entire game. This is a dude that Aaron Rodgers praised, right? Like when he was his quarterback's coach last OC or however they did that, had that mixed up in Green Bay, he always got rave reviews um, from Aaron Rodgers about how he helped him develop his play. So I'm looking at this situation to where I seen the dude get fired that I wasn't even sure what the hell he did. I just knew what his job title was. Yeah. And then we replaced him with a dude who got fired. And regardless of what people might say, I don't know the ins and outs of the numbers. I just know the Buffalo Bills had a better record after they fired Ken Dorsey than they did before. Well, they were trajectorying. Period. Their tra- trajectory was to miss the playoffs. So. And that move to fire Ken Dorsey was a little like the Eagles move when they flipped defensive coordinators after the 11 or 12 games, whatever it was. Now, in the Eagles' case, the whole thing blew up because the defensive coordinator that was there was doing a good job and was popular, and they brought an offensive guy on to, to be the D.C., mm-hmm. and it was an unmitigated disaster. It was a dumpster fire, and a team that was the one seed worked their way all the way to the last spot in the wild card and ended up losing to Tampa Bay. And- and Buffalo right. made a similar move at the midway point, and the chatter in Buffalo was, we're already thinking about next year. And Dorsey out, new play caller in, and they turned it like, around and, and make the And playoffs. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not either, man. Like, I want to give, give this a chance, right? If Ken Dorsey has success, that means the Cleveland Browns have success. That's right. But for me, if I'm being honest with myself, I have a hard time buying what they're selling because Kevin Stefanski, internally, I don't believe Kevin Stefanski wanted to fire Alex Van Pelt. Right, I agree. I don't. I don't think he wanted to do that. And, and if he was forced to make these moves on his staff, then I'm questioning how much control he really has. I'm questioning a lot of things about the culture that I thought was refreshed, revitalized, and revamped. Yeah. Well, and now I don't know answers no more. we thought we had. Yeah, that we I, no longer. I don't have. know no more. Well, you know, I, once again, I think I think one of the things is when you talk about power, just because somebody didn't show you they, that they had the power doesn't mean that it was already given away. I look at it like this. You notice that Andrew Barry wasn't on the stage today? Nope. Generally speaking, when you got a, a, a top-notch guy or a coordinator position or somewhere, it, it, you would seem that you would have the general manager up there speaking to why the move was made. But guess what? You have not heard him say anything about the move that was made offensively on the, on the coaching staff. So my thing was, when I seen that, you automatically knew what, it, what type, of, type of time it was, what we was on. And I think, and by the way, Kevin, Kevin didn't do himself no favors, right? And, and, and he didn't do himself no favors because when you put somebody at coordinator, right, and you don't let them do their job, who, how did you think you was going to keep him insulated, right? 
You know what I'm saying? If, if Alex Van Pelt was really the guy putting his name and signing off on, the, on, on, on them, them play sheets for every week, it would have had him have a better opportunity to go to Jimmy Haslam and say, what you mean you get rid of me? I did X, Y, and Z, X, Y, Z. But now, because you called the plays, there was no way you could have insulated him anymore. Because now it's like he was the obvious scapegoat, right? They're not going to get rid of you, right? Because you're a coach of the year. But the and, and some of the reason it, it seems icky, and, and I, that word is a loaded word, but <laughs> it's definitely a loaded word. Uh, the reason it's icky is because... It, it's an oxymoron. You're saying that on one hand, you got Schwartz and you got the back, comeback player of the year. You got the assistant of the year. Uh, you know, Stefanski is a co- up for the coach of the year. You got all these big time, the defensive player of the year. The Browns is all over that. But guess what? You get to the offseason, half the coaching staff then turned over. It, it sends two different messages. So for me, what it hit me with, with was, they really didn't think the season was all that great. Well, uh, or they didn't think the, it was th- or, or this. The season was great, but it wasn't great for the reason they needed it to be great for. They needed yeah. the season to be great because Deshaun Watson was great. Yes. And while all these other things were happening that were great, Deshaun Watson was involved in one great half of football. It was the comments that were attributed to Jimmy by a number of reporters after the Arizona 27 nothing win. Nice win, right? We didn't pass enough. So you know I what? I didn't get to show off my $230 million Maserati's arm. That's not the way I want to win. I want to win because of him, not with him. And see, that pisses me off. So you know what we shouldn't do this year? <laughs> what? Next year when we get to talking about Deshaun Watson, we're going to forget the win-loss record, right? Because apparently winning is not enough. We started the show talking about public perception and people worried about how things look. Damn the fact that he was five and one. Jimmy saying this man didn't throw for 300 yards, 400 yards, five touchdowns and no interceptions. I can care less that he won four or five games as a starter. It didn't look pretty enough. Listen, and I, that's the wrong message to be sending. I think that when the Browns lost to Houston, they did their owner a huge favor. Mm -hmm. because I believe Jimmy had already made up his mind. He didn't make up his mind after the Houston game. Oh, this is a pile of trash. I got to fire AVP. He 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 made up his mind whenever, whether it was because Flacco looked so good. Maybe Paul said he looks so good because the offense Kevin likes to run is suited to Flacco. It's not suited to Watson. Whatever was the tipping point that Jimmy decided we can't move forward with this, Imagine if the Browns beat Houston, then beat Baltimore. Now how are you going to fire AVP? Jimmy reminds How are you going to fire anybody? He, he reminds me of the owner from the, from the movie Major, Major League. League. Like, damn it. <laughs> we lost. Woo. You know, in life, people, life people, it ain't about winning. It's about winning or, or, or winning my way. You know, you don't like, you know, that we, we talk about it all the time. Like, you know, we watch uh, Steve Kerr says something. He's like, you know what? Um, you know, a lot of people come out to Golden State and watch Steph Curry play and everything else. And as a coach, you have it in your mind the way you want to play and you all the experience you have. But, how, but when you get here and you see Steph Curry pulling up from half court in your heart, you got to It's a tug. It's like, hey, I'm not, I wasn't taught to play the game this way. I don't value the game this way. But when you see a guy that's special that's doing it this way, it's, 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 a, it's a crossroads. It's either you go down this path or you go down this path. And it takes a lot from a, p- a person's ego to stand out of the way and say, I'm going to do it that way and let him shoot it from and half court. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I, it's what I've always gone back to, the DNA of a championship owner. I have talked to people in all, not just football, so I'll, just, I'll get that out there. I've, been, I've always been fascinated by leadership, by ownership, by methodology, And I have been a student slash fan of winning organizations. And I had a chance when I was sitting out my non-compete with ESPN to work for the New England Patriots. And although it was just for a couple of weeks, it was their playoff network that was a 24-hour streaming Mm -hmm. network. I got a chance to meet Mr. Kraft. I got a chance to spend time around the organization. And I went into that eyes wide open and I said, I want to see what all this hype's about. I learned day two what all the hype was about. 
He empowered, he hires great, smart, accomplished people. He's not going to baseball and hiring a baseball guy to run his football team, okay? That's not what he's about. He's about finding great quality people. He empowers them. And then you know what he does? He doesn't ever tell them anything. I need this. We're going to do this. He says one thing. I asked all of his leaders, what does he do? He says, our weekly meetings are him asking us questions. And you know what the questions are? What do you need? What do you need that you don't have? That's what a good owner does. That's what they do. The Steelers, they hire qualified, competent men. And do you think that Mr. Rooney is calling Mike Tomlin saying, yo, offensive coordinator's got to go. I, want, I, I, I need somebody that's going to... That's why they win. They don't meddle. And what's most disappointing to me is Jimmy Haslam was a minority owner in the Steelers. He saw how Mr. Rooney ran that team. Just hire good people and then stay out of the building. Because the year you weren't allowed in the building, they did pretty well. we got to get to some Super Bowl stuff here. We're going to start our ultimate same-game parlay on FanDuel. 